What's going on, everyone? My name is Hotchess Rogue Gaming. Oh my goodness, my bros and brunettes. K Pixels has finally released another episode of Backrooms. Welcome to Damage Control. Now, this was actually uploaded on my birthday, January 30th. Oh my god, K Pixels would, would not know that my birthday was on January 30th, the day that he actually uploaded Damage Control. So, K Pixels, if you're watching this video, I really want to say that you uploaded this episode of Backrooms on my birthday, January 30th. And thank you so much. I think it'll be my belated birthday special on this video. But this is another Hunter Reacts to Backrooms episode. So, I'm going to give this a like. It's almost up to 100,000 likes. So, as of right now, 883k likes. Oh my god. Holy shit, my bros and brunettes. So anyway, here we go, damage control! Here we go! Mark, this is Team A. Do you read us? Hey Team, this is Mark, I greet you. What is that? We need immediate arm support at room 14C. My team LBN held at gunpoint by a hostile. I repeat, please send immediate arm support to room 14C. Okay, okay, here we go. Whoa. All right, here we go with these guys again. Was that a monster behind us? Hello, are you there? Oh god, oh my god. Hey, this is a flashback. It was for the family reunion we watched. He's dead. Was that Michael? I think it was my guess. Let me turn the volume down a little because that was a little bit loud in my ears. Oh my god, yeah. I think as of right now in this reaction video, the video has like over 100,000 likes. As of now, I think. That is my prediction, if you already knew that I've uploaded this like... This recording will be recorded last night. And then, if you're watching this video, this, re this recording, as you can see here, that I'm doing for the reaction video, is recorded last night, my bros and brunettes. Then you probably knew what I was trying to get myself into already. And what are they tr trying to do? These people arguing and fighting? Like, what is going on? Oh, maybe that is because that's the... Yes, he has a gun! He has a gun! What is this guy has a gun? Is he trying to shoot everyone? No, that is not fair! Oh my god, that is so fucking horrible. Okay, he's running away with his firearm. What is he trying to do? Yeah, I think... Is he like another monster besides the entity? Because I think he has a rifle that, that recently killed Michael. Oh my god, guys! Holy shit! Yeah, speaking of this video, I'll put the original video, the link down in the description below. So that in case you could see the video that was released on my birthday. Oh, I, I can see that shadow figure. I think that's the same guy with a firearm, not the entity though. I'd like to thank you all once again for your patience on this. It has been a stressful 15 hours for all of us here. And while he can't currently be with us, Dr. Beck sends his apologies regarding the numerous inconveniences caused by our decision to keep you here overnight. Now, it appears that the situation has reached a point of some stability. Uh, we'll, we're still looking into a few things, uh, but I feel that we cannot properly address what occurred without running into speculation. What happened last night should not have happened. Not here, not with us. What occurred was a gross misunderstanding that was the result of some severe information mismanagement. Even now, I believe most of you still have an incomplete idea of what took place last night. Uh, so, uh, before I fill you in, I need to address the fact that there has been information deliberately withheld from many of you on the project. Uh, now, these choices were not made lightly and were done for only the best of reasons. However, I want to make it abundantly clear that following the events of last night, it has been proven to us that that method of conducting ourselves was not viable. 
So I'm coming to you now to correct this mistake and begin delivering the authentic order of events as we understand them. On the morning of March 1st, a team of four researchers was sent into the complex to conduct their routine layout analysis. George Levy, Marvin Lee, Ronald McCarthy, and Peter Tench. At around 12.25 p.m., the group realized that they had lost track of Tench while traversing the previously accessed branch of hallways. As you'll recall, this prompted an immediate withdrawal of response back to standard, followed by several days of significant search efforts. However, uh, those ultimately yielded nothing, and as far as any of us were concerned, Tench had simply vanished, leaving no physical trace. Now, for obvious reasons, that wasn't something that we could disclose to the public. So, roughly two weeks following his disappearance, our security team was forced to put together a more acceptable cause of death that would keep attention away from this institute and provide closure to the family. Uh, so, that is all close to common knowledge, I presume. Not all of you were with us at the time of the incident, however, you're certainly aware of the effects it has had on our internal procedures over the past few months. Regardless, that was where Tensha's involvement in this came to an end. Or, at least, that's what we assumed. Because on May 8th, at approximately 5.30pm, a motion alert was sent out from the complex, which was closed off at the time. One of our senior engineers was sent down to assess the situation, and discovered a male dressed in hazard gear who we were able to identify as Peter Tench. Immediately following this discovery, Tench was moved to a secure room on this floor where, over the following days, a select group of doctors were able to administer a panel of tests in order to determine what had happened to Peter in the two months he had been gone. Uh, those tests yielded very little useful information. Uh, by all measures, Peter appeared to be in excellent health. However, we were still provided one very useful tool in understanding uh, how the situation unfolded from his perspective. Some of you may recall that on the day of his disappearance, Tench was his team's designated camera operator. Well, when we recovered him, he still had that camera in his possession, and in fact had documented the entire ordeal. Uh, the footage will be presented in its entirety later today, however, for the purpose of this discussion, I will only be highlighting key events. This is the hallway where Peter Here we go with this scene! They're not in view, but you can hear the others walking behind him. Now, as he approaches the branch on the right here, pay close attention to the- Oh audience. yeah, I recognize this video! That's the one I've watched! That's where the people are chanting! And, and there were like... Two people with you that disappeared! I remember this! I've watched that before! What? There's three of them! Yep, that disappeared! See that? Now, I'd like to save the discussion for afterwards, but what you just saw is what we believe to be the moment that Peter was instantaneously transported two months forward in time. Is that what we were doing as Peter? That's the name? ...to the hallway in search of his team, but it is without any indication of the presence. The next 30 or so minutes of the tape uh, follow a fairly pained detention as he attempts to navigate his way back to the thresholds. He does obviously find his way back. However, the threshold appears not as he knows it, but as it appeared on the date of May 8th. And this ties us back to the moment when we recovered him. I remember so, this part. Uh, to summarize, from his point of view, he had only been inside the complex for several hours. Uh, so to him, all of the new developments surrounding the threshold were completely foreign. Uh, luckily, though, as I already mentioned, there were people available to manage the situation as it unfolded. And over the course of the following days, we were able, we, able to uh, properly sit down with Peter and work with him to gain a collective understanding of what had happened. However, there was still the very significant fact that Mr. Tench was considered legally deceased as a result of the cover story, and reversing that would be no easy feat. He understood this and was willing to cooperate while we looked for a way to reintegrate him without raising suspicion. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, that process ended up taking quite a bit longer than we had anticipated, and all the while, Peter was sucked out 
here waiting our game by. Uh, we did our best to keep him engaged, but it is hard to combat the effects of prolonged sensory deprivation on the human brain. And as a result, uh, Peter's mental state took a toll. Not to a degree that was outright concerning at first, but around the end of week two, we noticed that he was starting to exhibit a number of behaviors common in patients diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Though we don't have reason to believe that Mr. Tench was afflicted with that condition. Whatever the case, while he didn't express it outright, from what we could gather, he appeared to have deluded himself into believing that he was still inside some sort of illusion created by the complex and that we were secretly looking to do him harm. This all came to a head on the night of the 22nd, when, while Tent was finally about to be transferred to a temporary above-ground residence, he broke away from us and, using stolen credentials, forced his way back into the complex where he would go undiscovered until just last night, when he ambushed and violently attacked Team B in room 14C, leaving Dr. Bloom in critical condition. We can presume that during the two or so days Tem spent in the complex, he met through of the idea that he could somehow escape through an alternate threshold, but still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way, despite our actions saying exactly the opposite. Immediately after firing a single shot from the Remington 870 to Dr. Bloom's side, Tench fled the scene and headed to the threshold outpost, where he would turn the weapon on several more of you while progressing into standard and through the lower offices. Given the abrupt and chaotic nature of the unfolding situation, it took our security team several minutes longer than he ideally should have to figure out what was happening. But thankfully, while Tench was passing through one of the empty labs next to storage, Dr. Maxwell was able to act quickly and managed to disarm him, accidentally discharging the weapon into the ceiling in the process, though. However, Tench still managed to avoid apprehension, fleeing into the maintenance wing and evading our security staff by taking the freight elevator to the surface. Now, this situation could have played out very badly, given the potential number of witnesses around the building at the time. But, luckily, for everyone involved, as far as we can tell, Tench was not noticed as he exited the property. Around five minutes later, our security team made it to the ground floor and began a thorough sweep in the direction of the hillside where cameras had last observed Tench. Now, there's no easy way to say this other than to just say it. I am terribly sorry to inform you all, but Mr. Tench was found deceased halfway down the hillside. The result of an extreme blow to the head. It appears that while he was running through some brush, he failed to anticipate a sudden dip in the ground and tragically fell forward into a large rock. Given the circumstances, it was not something any of us could have anticipated or prevented. The tragedy of the entire situation undoubtedly remains, but Dr. Tench, regardless of how troubled he was in his final days, was a really man who gave his all to this project. He would certainly not want us hindering it in his name. What we're doing here is so much bigger than any one person. It is the work of a unified effort, and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of, that we hold on to the pre-established notion that Peter is and has been deceased. That is done, and there is nothing more to be extracted. Ah, whoa, 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 what the frick? If the wind is right, you can sail away. And the words said Tench, what does that mean? And the phone is ringing, of course. Are we getting a phone call from someone? Yeah, and as of right now in this reaction video, the original video of this has over 1 million views as well. Besides 100,000 likes.
Or is it just gonna zoom to the phone right now? We're supposed to pick up the phone, not just leaving it alone. Well, that is so weird. Well, guys, I don't know what this one has like over 1 million views, but okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it right now. Holy shit. Yep, so that that's probably it. Thank you all for watching. That was another episode of Backrooms Reaction Video. And uh, if, you, if you all like the video as well, don't forget to give us your thumbs up. Stay tuned with cooler. Be ready for the real action as always. Thank you so much to KPixels for uploading that on my birthday. And I appreciate it since KPixels himself didn't know about my birthday being on January 30th and all that. So thank you all for watching. As always, I will see you in the next new video. Bye-bye.